Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, I'm going to do a skim real quick. Now, in part one, we did the uh, dedication of the Temple of Solomon. Uh, part two, we did the division of Israel from Judah. And here in part three, we're going to cover about the um, captivity of Israel and then the captivity of Judah later. And then uh, hopefully... I'm going to try to make, I'm going to skim things real quick. I mean, if you really want to know the background, you could read the book of 2 Kings, and you could read Chronicles, or First and Second Chronicles, of the uh, kings of Israel and Judah, and you could read the background. But in a nutshell, Israel went into apostasy real, real early on, and uh, Judah did too, but Sometimes Judah had some decent kings, and then they have a bad king, and then a string of bad kings, and then they'd have a good king. And But uh, first, Israel was taken into captivity by Assyria. And then, and they took part of Judah, too. Now, they tried to take Jerusalem. They couldn't do it. Matter of fact, a, uh, an angel came down and smote I think it was like 100, 180,000 soldiers dead of the Assyrians when they tried to take Jerusalem. I mean, that is one, that is one large army. And uh, so basically, all of Israel and a large part of Judah went into captivity with the Assyrian Empire. And then, um, and then years later, the Babylonians came and took Jerusalem captive for 70 years. You, know, you can read about that under Daniel. And then um, they got released when the Medes and the Persians destroyed Babylon. And then they returned and rebuilt Jerusalem, the Judah did. And uh, that's basically what we're going to be studying a little, a little bit about. I anticipate part four will be the uh, New Testament. I, that's what I'm anticipating. So, all right, let's get going here. Second Kings chapter 16. All right, so Second Kings chapter 16 and verse 1. In the seventeenth year of Pekah, the son of Remaliah, Ahaz, the son of Jothan, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty years old was Ahaz when he began to reign, and reigned sixteen years in Jerusalem, and did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord. Uh, okay. And did not that which was right in the sight of the Lord his God, like David, his father. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel. Now, this is the king of Judah. But he walked in the ways of the king, kings of Israel. Now, the kings of Israel, perhaps you've heard of Ahab and Jezebel. Yeah, they were kings of Israel. Bad news bears, people. But he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, yea, and he made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. He sacrificed his child on an altar to Satan and burned him alive. That's what this means. Pass through made his son to pass through the fire, according to the abominations of the heathen. Abomination. Uh, now, all sin is sin, and then there's abominations. Uh, let me give you the Bible definition of a, 
uh, an abomination, the Bob translation. It means a sin that God really, 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 really hates. I mean, there's a sin, and then there's a sin that God super extra industrial strength hates. And that's what an abomination is. And there's not many things that God calls abominations. Sodomy is one of them. Pa killing your children in an, on an altar to Satan in fire, that's another one. Witchcraft is another one. Do uh, you want to know what some of the other ones are? Well, take a look. That's all I can tell you. And when uh, a nation's full of abominations, look out. Yea, and made his son to pass through the fire according to the abominations of the heathen whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel. And he sacrificed and burnt incense in the high places. Ah, and on the hills and under every green tree. Satanism. Then Reason, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war. Ah. So the king of Syria and the king of Israel came up to Jerusalem to fight the king of Jerusalem. But my pastor told me that Judas, uh, Judah and Israel and the Jews is all the same thing. Well, your pastor is either ignorant of the Bible and shouldn't be preaching, or he's a liar. And that's up to you to determine. They're not the same. They have different kings, they have different capitals, different land areas, and they fought wars against each other. That's like telling somebody from Atlanta that they're a Yankee. I mean, you know, them's fighting words, people. If you, you know, if you're from Georgia, to a lot of people in Georgia, you know, and I'm not picking on the Southerners. I mean, you know, I was born in Kentucky, which was uh, considered a Southern state. And, um, you know, the South is the Bible Belt. You know, there's a church on every corner. They may not be teaching the wrong thing, but, you know, you go up to New York, New Jersey, you, do you, there's a, you know, I don't know. There might be a church, churches up there, but are they not empty? I don't know. I don't know. It's sad. It's sad what America's become. All right, let's take a look. Then Rezin, king of Syria, and Pekah, son of Remaliah, king of Israel, came up to Jerusalem to war, and they besieged Ahaz, but could not overcome him. Uh, let's see. At that time, Reason, king of Syria, recovered Elath to Syria and drave the Jews from Elath, and the Syrians came to Elath and dwelt there unto this day. All righty. So Ahaz sent messengers to Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria. Now, I was under the impression that Syria and Assyria were part of each other. Maybe there were times when they have conquered one another. I'm not sure. But I've read different accounts. Sometimes it reads that they were separate people. Sometimes I read history stuff and it says that they were similar or the Assyrians conquered Syria. And they were part of their kingdom. I don't know. History books have all been rewritten. Stuff deleted. I, I don't know. But, uh, but listen to this. So Ahaz, now Ahaz is king of Jerusalem, sent messengers to Tiglath-Pileser, king of Assyria. Now remember, king of Israel and Syria went to Jerusalem and fought, right? Now Ahaz is sending messengers to the king of Assyria, saying, 
I am thy servant and thy son. Come up and save me out of the hand of the king of Syria and out of the hand of the king of Israel, which rise up against me. And Ahaz took the silver and gold that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house and sent it for a present to the king of Assyria. Do you think the Lord was happy about this? I don't think so. And the king of Assyria hearkened unto him, for the king of Assyria went up against Damascus, capital of, of Syria, right? And took it and carried the people of it captive to Kir and slew Rezin, or Rezin. And king Ahaz went to Damascus to meet Tiglath Pileser, king of Assyria, and saw an altar that was at Damascus. And king Ahaz went to Urijah, the priest, the fashion of the altar, and the pattern of it according to all the workmanship thereof. And Urijah, the priest, built an altar according to all that king Ahaz had sent from Damascus. So Urijah, the priest, made it against king Ahaz, came from Damascus. And when the king was come from Damascus, the king saw the altar, and the king approached to the altar and offered thereon. And he burnt his burnt offering and his meat offering and poured his drink offering and sprinkled the blood of his peace offerings upon the altar. And he brought also the brass and altar that was before the Lord from the forefront of the house, from between the altar and the house of the Lord, and put it on the north side of the altar. Uh... So in the last thing that we read, the uh, king of Assyria conquered Syria. Uh, you know, it, it, they took Damascus. They, you know, he, um, he conquered it and he killed the king. He took, you know, killed the king of Syria. I know these names can be confusing sometimes. And sometimes I have to read it a couple of, you know, several times before I finally get it. But uh, the king of Assyria conquered uh, Syria, uh, Damascus, which is, was the capital of Syria. So the Assyrians conquered Damascus, which was the capital of Syria. All right, in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 1. In the twelfth year of Ahaz, king of Judah, began Hoshea, the son of Elah, Elah to reign in Samaria over Israel nine years. And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, but not as the kings of Israel that were before him. So he was evil, but he was small evil, not huge, big evil like some of the other guys. Against him came up Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, and Hoshea became his servant, and gave him presents. So, you know, here it is. Um, they figure, well, I'm going to pay this guy off so he leaves me alone, right? And the king of Assyria found conspiracy in Hoshea, for he had sent messengers to So, king of Egypt, and brought no present to the king of Assyria as he had done year by year. Therefore the king of Assyria shut him up and bound him in prison. Then the king of Assyria came up throughout all the land and went to Samaria and besieged it three years. Listen to this. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria. Now remember, Samaria was the capital, the capital of northern Israel. Jerusalem was the capital of southern Judah. So in the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took Samaria and carried Israel away into Assyria and placed them in Hala and in Habor by the river Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. Huh. So I wonder if, you know, you're, you're not talking just a couple of years. Uh, I think there was several... A couple hundred years between the time of 
the Assyrian captivity of northern Israel and then the Babylonian captivity of Judah. And then Judah was in the captivity for 70 years. And here it is, you got Israel that are in the cities of the Medes. And then the Medes and the Persians went to Babylon. So you're probably talking a couple hundred, you know, 200 years, maybe more. I'll take a look at it and let you know in a second here. All right, according to um, some sources here, the Assyrian captivity was 722, and I say B.C., before Christ. If you ever see B.C.E., uh, you know that you're dealing with an Antichrist website and authors, because B.C.E. stands for Before Common Era. Era, E-R-A, Era. And what they're saying is that the birth of Christ was something very common. Really? God in, coming in the flesh in human form is common? Really? It's only happened one time in history, but it was 722. And then the Babylonian captivity came in 597. So you have approximately you know, 120 years approximately, and then another 70 years for the captivity. Um, so you're talking roughly 200, you know, about 200 years. I mean, the, these captivities, uh, they didn't happen exactly. There was like wars and part of this part of the country would take and was taken captive, and then they moved forward. They took another part. So, you know, you're talking probably around 200 years for the most part. How many of Israel in the city of the Medes became soldiers in the army of the Medes and the Persians and then helped destroy Babylon that had taken their brother, Judah, captive? I wonder, because... The Medes and the Persians were the ones that destroyed Babylon that had taken Judah captive. So I thought that's an interesting point. But then again, some people say that I'm no fun. So, you know, what I consider interesting. Um, I just know I don't find anything on television very interesting. All right, let's go back. All right, 2 Kings 17 and verse 6. In the ninth year of Hoshea, the king of Assyria took the king of Assyria took Samaria. Remember the Samaritan woman at the well? Yeah. The capital of Israel. And carried Israel away into Assyria and placed him in Hala and in Habor by the river of Gozan and in the cities of the Medes. For so it was that the children of Israel had sinned for so it was that the children of Israel had sinned against the Lord their God, which had brought them up out of the land of Egypt and uh, from under the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and had feared other gods, and walked in the statutes of the heathen, whom the Lord cast out from before the children of Israel and of the children, uh, kings of Israel, which they had made. And the children of Israel did secretly those things that were not that were not right against the Lord their God, and they built them high places in all their cities, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city, and they set them up images or idols. Uh, images in the Greek word is icons. Think about that. And they set them up images and groves in every high hill and under every green tree. And there they burnt incense in all the high places, and did the heathen, as did the heathen whom the Lord carried away bef uh, before them, and wrought wicked things to provoke the Lord to anger. For they served idols, whereof the Lord said unto them, Ye shall not do this thing. Sounds like uh, just like America, doesn't it? Yet the Lord testified against Israel and against Judah, 
by all the prophets and by all the seers, S-E-E-R-S. -E uh, seer is just an Old Testament word for prophet. Bef later they, earlier they were called seers. Later on they were called prophets, but it's the same thing. Um, by all the prophets and by all the seers saying, Turn ye from your evil ways and keep my commandments and my statutes according to all the law which I commanded your fathers and which I sent to you by my servants, the prophets. Notwithstanding, they would not hear, but hardened their necks like the neck of their fathers, that they did not believe in the Lord their God. You know what? This could be the headlines in America and the European Union and the UK. Not much different. Not if you ask me. Verse 15, And they rejected his statutes and his covenant that they made with their fathers and his testimonies which he testified against them. And they followed vanity and became vain. Vanity and vain, worthless. And went after the heathen that were round about them concerning whom the Lord had charged them that they should not do like them. All right, verse 16. And they left all the commandments of the Lord their God and made them molten images, even two calves, and made a grove and worshipped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. Worshipped all the hosts of heaven. They're talking about the, the hosts of heaven were the fallen angels, people. I mean, not all the host of heaven was the fallen angels, but a third of them were, you know. So they're, they're worshiping the devils. I mean, really. And they serve Baal. Baal is just a generic word that meant Lord. And it became so associated with Satanism that the Lord said, don't call me that anymore. I mean, Really. Verse 17, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and use divination. Uh, that's from the root word divine. So they're using magic. And use divination and enchantments, magic spells, and sold themselves to do evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him to answer. A I'm sorry, to provoke him to anger. Therefore the Lord was very angry with Israel and removed them out of his sight. There was none left but the tribe of Judah only. Also Judah kept not the commandments of the Lord their God, but walked in the statutes of Israel which they made. And the Lord rejected all the seed of Israel and afflicted them and delivered them into the hand of spoilers until he had cast them out of his sight. Boy, he's not too happy here, is he? And the pre-trib rapture crowd think, oh, we're just going to fly away. We're doing all the same things. What do you think the abortion clinics are? You think that's any different than burning your children alive in a, in a fire? You think that's any different? I don't. The end result's the same. Your children are dead. I mean, you know, well, I tell you what, I wish I'd have stayed with the Lord when I was a young kid instead of walking away. I, there's a lot of things I'd have done differently. So, makes me want to cry sometimes. Because, boy, I tell you what. Ugh. Verse 21, for he rent or he tore Israel from the house of David, Judah, and they made Jeroboam the son of Nebat king, and Jeroboam drove Israel from, the, from following the Lord and made them sin a great sin. And the children of Israel walked in all the sins of Jeroboam, which he did. They departed not from them until the Lord removed Israel out of his sight, as he had said by all his servants, the prophets. So was Israel carried away out of their own land to Assyria unto this day. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Kuthan, Kutha, and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharvaim 
and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel, and they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Now, you got Israel's scattered everywhere. You had heathens in Samaria, and you had probably a remnant of Israel in Samaria too. Let's face it, the woman at the well, um, she even told Jesus that, you know, our father Jacob, and uh, Jesus didn't correct her and say, oh, no, no, you're not, you're not of Jacob Israel. No, 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 no. You're a Samaritan. This is why the, uh, the Jews in Jesus' time didn't have any dealings with the Samaritans, because uh, there was a lot of mixed people there. So, but um, if you've got people that are managing the land, uh, you know, the vineyards and your orchards and your you know, growing the food and stuff, you're an idiot if you take them away and then put total strangers in there that, you know, don't know what's going on. No, no, no. You don't take the farmers away from the land. You leave those people there. If you've got a brain, I mean, you know, that's just the way it is. You know, if somebody's got a nice vineyard and you want wine and grapes to eat, leave them there and then make them pay a tax. You know, that's how it works. Um, so there were, there were people left in the land. They didn't take every single Israelite out. I'm pretty sure. But you know what? Um, there were Israelites, like I say, in uh, the Medes and probably in Persia too. And guess what? Uh, if you've ever heard of the Parthian Empire, which was contemporary with Rome, uh, that was their land area where Israel went. So, and the thing is, is when uh, the Assyrian Empire collapsed um, because Babylon rose up, Israel scattered. They left. Uh, the Assyrians were bad news. They treated their prisoners horrible. So, you know, they left. As soon as the Assyrian army collapsed, they ran away. I mean, they got out of Dodge quick. Uh, matter of fact, the um, it was uh, written in history that the Assyrians, uh, they served a god called Dagon, D-A-G-O-N. Their capital was Nineveh. Perhaps you've heard of Jonah. Jonah was sent to Nineveh. But they would, uh, when they would take their captives, they would take a fish hook and put it through their, their mouth, probably their lips, and then lead them like a caught fish on, on lines. I mean, how would you like to have a fish hook put through your lips? Uh, I don't think I would care for it too much, but that's what, uh, that's what they did. So the Lord had had enough. Oh, you want to... You want to burn your children alive in a fire to, and worship the devils? Hey, no problem. I'm going to make sure you don't do that anymore. You're going to go to Assyria. And uh, you don't like the way I treat you? Well, you could see how they treat you. And uh, the ultimate thing is going to be what's coming. This uh, one world government of the devil. Oh, yeah. All right, uh, let's see. Verse 25. And so it was at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Therefore the Lord sent lions among them, which slew some of them. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, The nation which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria know not the manner of the God of the land. Therefore he hath sent lions among them, and behold, they slay them, because... They know not the manner of the God of the land. See, they were superstitious back in them days. You know, they, oh, you got a God of the hill, you got a God of the valley. Um, so, verse 28. Then one of the priests whom they had carried away from Samaria came and dwelt in Bethel and taught them how they should fear the Lord. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places, which the Samaritans had made, every nation in their 
cities wherein they dwelt. And the men of Babylon make, made Sukkoth Benoth, and the men of Kuth made Nergal, and the men of Hamath made Ashima, and the Ivites made Nibha and Tartak, and the Shephavites burnt their children in fire to Adra Malek and Anna Malek, the gods of Sepharvaim. That sounds like uh, Molech and the wife of Molech. That Adra, Adra Melech and Anna Melech. I don't know. Sorry if I mispronounce these things. I, you know. So they feared the Lord and made unto themselves of the lowest of them priests of the high places which sacrificed for them in the houses of the high places. They feared the Lord and served their own gods after the manner of the nations whom they carried away from thence. Unto this day they do after the former matters. They fear not the Lord, neither do they after their statutes and after their ordinances or after the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded the children of Jacob, whom he named Israel, with whom the God had made a covenant and charged them, saying, Ye shall not fear other gods, nor bow yourselves to them, nor serve them, nor sacrifice to them. But the Lord, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a stretched out arm, him shall ye fear, and him shall ye worship, and to him shall ye do sacrifice. And the statutes and the ordinances and the law and the commandments which he wrote for you, ye shall observe to do forevermore, and ye shall not fear other gods. And the covenant that I made with you ye shall not forget, neither shall ye fear other gods. But the Lord your God ye shall fear, and he shall deliver you out of the hand, out of, the hand of all your enemies. Howbeit they did not hearken. Nope, they didn't hear, but they did after their former matter. So these nations fear the Lord and serve their graven images, both their children and their children's children, as did their fathers, so do they unto this day. All right, so Israel is gone. They're into captivity. All right, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 18. Uh, let's see. Now it came to pass in the third year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Hezekiah, the son of Ahaz, king of Judah, began to reign. Twenty and five years old was he when he began to reign, and he reigned twenty and nine years in Jerusalem. His mother's name also was Abai, Abi, Abai, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right. He did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David his father did. So here's a good king of Judah. Verse 4. He removed the high places and break the images and cut down the groves and break in pieces the brazen, brazen serpent that Moses had made. Now, I remember uh, if you read the book of, I think it's Exodus, the people were bitten by fiery serpents, and uh, everybody was told to uh, look upon the, the bra brass serpent that was lifted up, and if they, if they looked at it, they were uh, healed of the snake bite, of the fiery flying serpents. Matter of fact, the Bible, uh, Christ said, even as uh, Moses lifted up the servant, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up. I don't know why they picked a serpent, but I don't know. Uh, so Moses had made a brass serpent, and uh, the children of Israel were burning incense to it. Yeah, not good, right? You want to know why... Uh, Moses contended with uh, Michael for the body of Moses because if they could have dug up the body of Moses and got his bones, they would have probably turned him into some kind of talismans or 
some kind of an amulet or, you know, they'd have been carrying around little pieces of his bones. That's why uh, God himself buried Moses and hid the body from all the humans. So, so he, uh, the good king break in pieces the brazen serpent that Moses had made for under those days the children of Israel did burn incense to it and he called it Nehushtan. He trusted in the Lord God of Israel so that after him was none like him among all the kings of Judah nor any that were before him. So this was a really good king. For he clave to the Lord, departed not from following him, but kept his commandments, which the Lord commanded Moses. And the Lord was with him. Boy, that's, that's a testimony I'd like to hear. And the Lord was with him, and he prospered whithersoever he went forth, and he rebelled against the king of Assyria and served him not. He smote the Philistines, even unto Gaza, and the borders thereof, from the tower of the watchman to the fenced city. Uh... Goliath was one of the Philistines. Verse 9, And it came to pass in the fourth year of King Hezekiah, which was the seventh year of Hoshea, son of Elah, king of Israel, that Shalmaneser, king of Assyria, came up against Samaria and besieged it. All right. And at the end of three years they took it, even in the sixth year of Hezekiah, which is the ninth year of Hoshea, king of Israel, Samaria, was taken. And the king of Assyria did carry away Israel unto Assyria and put them in Hala and by and in Habor by the river of Gozan in the cities of the Medes. For a second there, I thought I was reading the, uh, the old chapter. Now, like I said, in college, I always learned that uh, when something was repeated a couple times, it would be on the test. Well, we're reading the same thing, right? Verse 12, because they obeyed not, because they obeyed not the voice of the Lord their God, but transgressed his covenant and all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded and would not hear them nor do them. Now, in the 14th year of King Hezekiah, did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced city of cities of Judah and took them. You see, I told you, the Assyrians took not only Israel, but they took parts of Judah too. Parts of Judah, not, not all of Judah, but parts of Judah they took. Came up against all the fences city of Judah and took them. Uh, I should point out right here that uh, Historians trace Germany, the, the German people coming out of Assyria. Did you know that? Historians trace the German people back to Assyria. Well, guess what? Israel and Judah were in Assyria. And then when the Assyrian Empire collapsed, they went to Europe. Now, if you look at Germanic old, old Germanic script. They're old alphabets. I'm talking the alphabet back hundreds of years ago. Take a look at Hebrew. They're very, very similar. Um, I was in Germany for, in the army, oh, at least a year. And, um, I was learning German, you know, and the sounds and everything of the words. And matter of fact, when I started studying some Hebrew in, when I started studying the, the Bible, I noticed a lot of the, the, the sounds are very similar. So I suspect, I suspect strongly that Germany is at least part of Judah. You know, Judah was to be the tribe of the kings. Let's face it, King David, Christ, the kings, Solomon. Now, what people don't know is that almost all of royalty in Europe were of Germanic extraction. 
Look it up. I'm not making this stuff up. You know, this is the stuff the churches hide from you because they don't want you to know your heritage. They want you to think, oh, those little antichrists over in the Middle East are God's chosen people. Well, they are chosen, but not for not what the churches are teaching. They're chosen for something else. The King of England was of uh, King George. I think King George I and King George II, if I remember correctly, they didn't even speak English. The King of England didn't even speak English. They were Germans. They spoke German. Think about that. Uh, the uh, King of England, the King of Germany, and the King of Russia in World War I, the Kaiser, the Tsar, and the King of England were all cousins in World War I. Matter of fact, they said if Queen Elizabeth had been alive, World War I never would have happened. So here it is, they, the, the devil's kids have tricked us into fighting our own people. Instead of us going against them, we're fighting each other. You know, take a, right, take a look at Germanic, uh, German royalty in Europe. And you will find, I mean, Greece, Spain, uh, you know, the, the Nordic, some of the Nordic countries. I mean, they were, almost all of them were Germanic, of ex Germanic extraction. It's amazing. I find it absolutely amazing. I mean, Christ is ultimately the, uh, the top king, but, you know, the Assyrians took Ju uh, Judah into their captivity, and then uh, when Assyria collapsed, Assyria, uh, the people that lived in Assyria went to Germany. And then you got the Christadelphians, another cult like the Jehovah's Witnesses, um, that'll uh, tell you, oh, Germany is the Assyrians. Well, there's probably is some Assyrian blood in Germany, but there's also Israelite and Judah blood in Germany, too. Judah was to be first in war. Do you know it took the entire, almost the entire world to defeat Germany in World War I and World War II? It took the Germans in America to defeat the Germans in Germany, along with Russia and England. And in World War I, the same thing. It took France, England, and the United States to defeat Germany. Well, actually, Germany in World War I was really not defeated. Um, they just signed an armistice. You know, Germany. I mean, Judah, first in war. I don't know. People tell me, oh, that's heresy, that's heresy. Well, look at those, oh, those antichrists in the Middle East, and you show me where they have fulfilled any of the promises that God made to Israel and Judah. They don't. You know what promises they fulfill? The, 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 wandering, the wanderings of Cain and of Esau, Edom. You used to be able to be able to find the 1925 You Know Who-ish Encyclopedia. And it said Esau Edom is in modern uh, You Know who -ry today. You can't even find it anymore. Google has totally deleted the listings. I wish I'd have copied some of that stuff, but uh, I didn't. You can't even find this stuff anymore. But it's there. So they fulfill the prophecies of Cain, Canaan, Esau, and Edom, and the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Moabites, and all the other ites. But Bob, you're teaching heresy. Everybody knows that the Antichrists are God's chosen people. Well, if you want to believe that, fine. Go bless them. Go bless those that hate Jesus and see how it works for you. All right. 2 Kings chapter 18, verse 13. Now in the 14th year of King Hezekiah did Sennacherib, king of Assyria, come up against all the fenced cities of Judah and took them. And Hezekiah, king of Judah, sent to the king of Assyria to Lachish, saying, I have offended. Return from me that which thou puttest on me will I bear. 
And the king of Assyria appointed unto Hezekiah, king of Judah, 300 talents of silver and 30 talents of gold. Now remember, a talent is about 70 pounds, or about 32 kilograms. And Hezekiah gave him all the silver that was found in the house of the Lord and in the treasures of the king's house. At the time did Hezekiah cut off the gold from the doors of the temple of the Lord and from the pillars which Hezekiah, king of Judah, had overlaid and gave it to the king of Assyria. Hmm. And the king of Assyria sent Tartan and Rabsaris and Rabshakeh from Lachish to King Hezekiah with a great host against Jerusalem. And they came up and came to Jerusalem, and when they were come up, they came and stood by the conduit of the upper pool, which is in the highway of the Fuller's Field. And when they had called to the king, they came out to them, Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna, the scribe, and Joah, the son of Asaph, the recorder. And Rabshakeh said unto him, Speaking now to Hezekiah, thus saith the great king, the king of Assyria, What confidence is this, therein thou trustest? Thou sayest, but they are but vain words. I have counsel and strength for the war. Now on whom dost thou trust that thou rebellest against me? Now behold, thou trustest upon the staff of this bruised reed, even upon Egypt, on which if a man lean, it will go into his hand and pierce it. So is Pharaoh king of Egypt unto all that trust on him. Now, a reed is a, a reed is just a glorified strong piece of grass basically you know and if you put your weight on it it'll you know snap so that's what they're comparing Egypt to but if ye say unto me we trust in the Lord our God is not that he whose high places and whose altars Hezekiah hath taken away, and hath said to Judah and Jerusalem, Ye shall worship before this altar in Jerusalem? Now therefore I pray thee, give pledges to my lord, the king of Assyria, and I will deliver thee two thousand horses, if thou be able on thy part to set riders upon them. How then wilt thou turn away the face of one captain of the least of my master's servants, and put thy trust on Egypt for chariots and for horsemen? And I now come up without the Lord against this place to destroy it. The Lord said to me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Then said Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and Shebna and Joah, unto Rabshakeh, Speak, I pray thee to thy servants in the Syrian language, for we understand it. And talk not to us in the Jews' language, in the ears of the people that are on the wall. So, in other words, uh, speak to us in your language. Don't speak to us in Hebrew, because we don't want everybody to hear what you're saying. But Reb Shaka said unto them, Hath my master sent me to thy master and to thee to speak these words? Hath he not sent me to the men which sit on the wall, that they may eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you? Um... Why would people eat their own uh, number two and drink their own number one? Why? Because they had nothing else to eat. You know, when you're in a siege, you're not getting crops in from the field. Whatever's in the city is in the city and nothing else is getting in. Nothing else is getting out. That's why sieges were so dangerous because, you know, you do that for six months and... You know, the city's going to starve. Then Rabshakeh stood and cried with a loud voice in the Jews' language and spake, saying, Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus saith the king, Let not Hezekiah deceive you, for he shall not be able to deliver you out of, the ha of his hand. Neither let Hezekiah make you trust in the Lord, saying, The Lord will surely deliver us, and this city shall not be delivered into the hand 
of the king of Assyria. Hearken not to Hezekiah, for thus saith the king of Assyria, Make an agreement with me by a present, and come out to me, then and then eat ye every man of his own vine, and every one of his fig tree, and drink ye every man uh, and, and drink ye every one the waters of his cistern, until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of corn and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and of honey, that ye may live and not die. And hearken not unto Hezekiah when he persuadeth you, saying, The Lord will deliver us. Listen to this. Hath any of the gods of the nations delivered at all his land out of the hand of the king of out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Yeah, were were the gods of anybody else able to uh, stop the king of Assyria? And the answer is no. Where are the gods of Hamath and of Arpad and the gods of Shepharvim, Hena and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of mine hand? Who are they among all the gods of the countries that have delivered their country out of mine hand that the Lord should deliver Jerusalem out of mine hand? Huh. This is See, this is a challenge to the Lord. They're basically saying, Ha, huh, all the other gods couldn't deliver their cities out of, out of you know, our armies of Assyria. And you think your God's going to deliver you? Ha. Huh. Well, guess what? Let's see what happens. But the people held their peace and answered him not a word, for the king's commandment was, saying, Answer him not. Then came Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and Joash the son of Asaph the recorder, to Hezekiah with their clothes rent, and told him the words of Rabshakeh. All right, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 1. And then... Uh, we will, uh, wow, I might not be able to get to uh, the carrying away into Babylon until part four. We'll see what happens. All right, Second Kings 19, verse 1. And it came to pass when King Hezekiah heard it that he rent his clothes and covered himself with sackcloth and went into the house of the Lord. And he sent Eliakim which was over the household, and Shebna the scribe, and the elders of the priests, covered with sackcloth, to Isaiah, the prophet, the son of Amos. Oh, uh, this is the same Isaiah that, uh, you know, the book of Isaiah. All 66 chapters. Isaiah. What a, what a wonderful book. I did a commentary on Isaiah, if you're interested. And they said unto him, Thus saith Hezekiah, This day is a day of trouble and of rebuke and blasphemy, for the children are come to the birth, and there is not strength to bring forth. In other words, they're likening, comparing this to a woman that's pregnant, getting ready to deliver a child, but she has no more strength. She can't, the child is going to die inside of her, and she's going to die with the child. That's basically what they're saying here. Verse 4, It may be that Thy, uh, the Lord thy God will hear all the words of Rabshakeh, Rabshake, whom the king of Assyria, his master, hath sent to reproach, to reproach the living God, and will reprove the words which the Lord thy God hath heard. Wherefore, lift up thy prayer for the remnant that are left. So the servants of king Hezekiah came to Isaiah. And Isaiah said unto them, Thus shall ye say to your master, Thus saith the Lord, Be not afraid of the words which thou hast heard, with which the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Oh boy! Behold, I will send a blast upon them, and he shall hear a rumor and shall return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. So, Rab... Shaka returned and found the king of Assyria warring against Libna, for he had heard that he had departed from Lachish. And when he heard of Tirhaka, king of Ethiopia, behold, he has come out to fight against thee, he sent messengers again to Hezekiah, saying, Thus shall ye speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah, saying, Let not thy God, in whom thou trustest, deceive thee, saying, Jerusalem shall not be delivered into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, 
Thou hast heard what the kings of Assyria have done to all lands by destroying them utterly, and shalt thou be delivered? Have the gods of the nations delivered them which my father hath destroyed, as Gozan and Hara and Repheth, Rezeph, and the children of Eden, which were in Telassar, and the children of Eden? Where is the king of Hamath, and the king of Arpad, and the king of the city of Shepharvim, of Hena and Iva? And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands, and have cast their gods into the fire. For they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore they have destroyed them. Now therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee, save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Then, then Isaiah, then Isaiah the son of Amos, sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, that thou, uh, that which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. This is the word that the Lord hath spoken concerning him. The virgin, the daughter of Zion, hath despised me and laughed thee to scorn. The daughter of Jerusalem hath shaken her head at thee. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? Yeah, you see, they're, what they're doing here is saying, well, you know, Lord, uh, these people are blaspheming you. But the Lord's saying, uh, yeah, but before they blaspheme me, you did also. The people of Jerusalem were not any better than Israel before them. Let's face it. In some ways, they were worse. Whom hast thou reproached and blasphemed? And against whom hast thou exalted thy voice and lifted up thine eyes, thine eyes on high, even against the Holy One of Israel? But thy messengers thou hast reproached the Lord and hast said, With the multitude of my chariots I am come up to the heights of the mountains, to the sides of Lebanon, and will cut down the tall cedar trees thereof, and the choice fir trees thereof. And I will enter into the lodgings of his borders and into the forests of his Carmel. I have digged and drunk strange waters. With the soles of my feet have I dried up all the rivers of besieged places. Hast thou not heard long ago how I have done it, and of ancient times that I have formed it? How have I brought it to pass that thou shouldest be to lay waste fences cities into ruinous heaps? Therefore their inhabitants were of small power. They were dismayed and confounded. They were as the grass of the field and as the green herb, as the grass on the housetops and as corn blasted before it be grown up. But I know thy abode and thy going out and thy comings in and thy rage against me. Because thy rage against me and thy tumult is come up unto mine ears, therefore I will put my hook in thy nose and my bridle in thy lips, and I will turn thee back by the way which thou camest. And this shall be a sign unto thee. Ye shall eat this year such thing as grow of themselves, and in the second year which, that which springeth of the same, and in the third year sow ye and reap, and plant vineyards, and eat the fruits thereof. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah. Listen to this. And the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. For out of Jerusalem shall go forth a remnant. And they that escaped out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts, shall do this. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, Listen to this carefully. 
Therefore, thus saith the king, uh, the, I'm sorry, therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there, nor come before it with shield, nor cast a bank against it. By the way that he came, by the same shall he return, and shall not come into the city, saith the Lord. For I will defend the city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. You see, Lord's going to do it for his sake and for David's sake, not because of the people. Listen to this, verse 35. And it came to pass that night that the angel of the Lord went out and smote in the camp of the Assyrians an hundred fourscore and five thousand. That's one hundred and eighty-five thousand troops. And when they arose early in the morning, behold, they were all dead corpses. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went, returned, and dwelt at Nineveh, his capital. And it came to pass, as it was worshipping in the house of Nishrosh, his god, that Adramelech and Sharezer, his son, smote him with the sword. And they escaped into the land of Armenia, and Esarhaddon, his son, reigned in his stead. His own children killed him when he was worshipping his god. So, you know what, people? 185,000 men died because of one angel. Yeah. And the Lord has thousands of them. So, I don't think uh, the wicked of the earth have a chance. What do you think? For those of you that were in the military, 185,000 is a, a, a very large field army or uh, two corps or approximately four divisions. I, that's a lot of troops. I mean, that's a large, a large field army. And uh, in, the, in the American forces, that would be commanded by a four-star general. A five-star, there's only one five-star general in the army, and that's, a, that's a, the general of the army. Well, at least that's how it used to be in World War II. Um, I mean, there's only, you know, that's like four-star general is the second highest rank in the army. Um, and matter of fact, the army cannot promote a general. A general has to be promoted by Congress. And the only person above a four-star general would be a five-star general, and the only person above him would be the president. In theory, anyways. That's a large, that's a large army, people. A large army. All right, so here's the deal. Israel was taken captive by the Assyrians. They also took part of Judah, all their fenced cities. The only, basically, the only city they couldn't take was Jerusalem. So, about a hundred years, a hundred, hundred and twenty years or so later, uh, Babylon is going to come and take Jerusalem captive. So here it is, Jerusalem, all the people of Jerusalem had seen all this stuff had happening. Had seen all the wickedness that Israel did. And did they repent? No. Absolutely not. You know, it's a shame, but that's the way it goes. All right, so I guess I'm going to make this, um, it's already been an hour, so I guess I'll make this the end of part three, and then we'll do a part four. We'll do the Babylonian captivity, cover a few things, and then we'll do the return from Babylon, where they rebuild Jerusalem and uh, rebuild the temple. But before we do that, I want to read a little bit about... Um, we can read a couple things. I want to read some things about Damascus, which was the capital of Syria. All right, Second uh, Chronicles chapter 28, verse 21. For Ahaz, one of the kings, took away a portion out of the house of the Lord and out of the house of the king and of the princes and gave it to the king of 
uh, Assyria, but he helped him not. And in the time of his distress did he trespass yet more against the Lord. This is that king Ahaz. For he sacrificed unto the gods of Damascus, which smote him. And he said, Because the gods of the kings of Syria help them, therefore I will, will I sacrifice to them that they may help me. But they were the ruin of him, but they were the ruin of him and of all Israel. So instead of helping, they hurt. And Ahaz gathered together the vessels of the house of God and cut in pieces the vessels of the house of God and shut up and shut up the doors of the house of God. So he closed the doors basically to the church. Think about that. And shut up the doors of the house of the house of the Lord, and he made him altars in every corner of Jerusalem. Not good. All right, so. Now, there was, uh, in Isaiah 8, uh, let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah 8, verse 1. Moreover, the word... Uh, moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it with a men's pen concerning, uh, oh boy, Maharan Shalahashbash, something like that. And I took unto me faithful witnesses to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of uh, Zeberichiah. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Meir Shalahashbaj. For, be behold, uh, for, before, for before the child shall have knowledge to cry, My mother and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria, shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. Um. The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, 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 that go softly and rejoice in reason and Remaliah's son. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria, and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks." So he's comparing here his army like to an overflowing river. It just, the water goes everywhere. The army will go over everywhere. So, uh, and he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck and stretching out of his wings shall till uh, fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. So, here it is. Now, in Isaiah 17, 1, we read, The burden of Damascus. Behold, Damascus is taken away from being a city, and it shall be a ruinous heap. Some Bible people say this happened in the past, and then it was re rebuilt. I don't know if that's true or not. But uh, uh, some modern Bible people say that Damascus would be dis will be destroyed. Probably a nuclear a nuclear strike. I don't know. A ruinous heap. I don't know. Wouldn't be surprise me because uh, Damascus, Syria, is uh, not playing along with the uh, the New World odor odor, you know, because they stink uh, people. So don't be surprised if one day uh, what happened to uh, Lebanon recently, that kaboom, happens to uh, Damascus. In the book of Amos 5.27, the Lord says, Therefore will I cause you to go into captivity beyond Damascus, saith the Lord, whose name is the God of hosts. And that's what's been happening, right? God uh, 
took them away. So, and guess what? In Acts chapter 9, guess what? That was uh, Saul, his journey. He was on the road to Damascus when he met Jesus, who is the Christ. Think about that. So I don't believe that uh, that thing about Damascus being a ruinous heap uh, happened in the past. I think it's future. So I don't know. All right. Well, the next Bible study we do, we'll, uh, we will cover the uh, Babylonian captivity where they take the remainder of Judah in Jerusalem captive and for 70 years until they return and then they will rebuild the temple and then after that we'll probably go into the uh the new testament which is what i'm hoping for anyways because that's what it's all about the new testament not the renewed covenant but the new covenant so all right well this is Jap Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ. The uh, Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to them and them alone. In Jesus' name, all one God, world without end. Amen.